Hey guys, welcome back to my Be Savage art channel. And today we are going to talk about my royal family paintings and why I paint the royal fam so much. Um, as a matter of fact, to be honest, I literally just delivered four new ones to Artworks Gallery in Richmond. And dude, if you go to the links in the description, it'll totally take you there to my Instagram, to the Facebook. <laughs> to my website all of it so yeah just check out the links in the description and if you want to do your girl a solid you know hit subscribe and subscribe to my channel so yeah the royal fam squad <laughs> So long before they were in the recent headlines, I mean, really long before I might like age myself a little bit here, but for real, 20 years ago, um, I began to really be interested in the actual history of the monarchs of England and later on the United Kingdom. And I had always been interested in art and literature. Those were my, I mean, since I was old enough to know what they were, that's my thing, that's my jam, art and literature. So, I mean, you could really say that it kind of began with William Shakespeare. Uh, my dad took me to the UK back in 2002, 2003. And the only thing I really, really wanted to see was Shakespeare's Globe Theater. And when we went to see it, it was incredible. I mean, it's not like the original Globe Theater, but it's pretty damn cool to go. And that naturally led to me wanting to read every single biography I could about William Shakespeare, the man. And naturally, you cannot read about the life of William Shakespeare without stumbling on to Elizabeth I. And she is a bad bitch. <laughs> Let me just tell you, she took a small like country with no money and literally whipped the shit out of the Spanish Armada. That's girl power for real. So, I mean, but you can't read about Elizabeth the first without stumbling onto Henry the eighth. And I mean, drama. I mean, a guy that was married six times, executed two of his wives, um, basically created the Church of England. Well, what ended up being the Church of England because he was pissed off at the Pope because he wanted a divorce from his old wife to marry his hot new young one. What's up, girl? And of course, the hot new young one, Anne Boleyn. Like, you see where I'm going with this. It's like one after the other after the other. Um, you, you can't read about <laughs> Anne Boleyn and Henry VIII and his wives and his issues. I mean, talk about a man with issues. But the recurring theme in all of it was what it meant to be a king or a queen of England. I mean, but still, I mean, to be honest, I was definitely, <laughs> you can't help but like keep reading when you get into elizabeth the first and then her cousin mary queen of scots i mean she blew up her husband well she was like accused of blowing up her husband like actually blowing the man up <laughs> with explosives but again you see where i'm going so it was really all of the intrigue and you know, drama that kept me reading, but you know, the rest wasn't lost on me. You know, you got it, you pick it up, you pick it up along the way when you're reading all the other stuff, all the juicy details, you pick up what the monarchy meant to each and every one of these people. A lot of the times it was power. I mean, the wars of the roses. I mean, it mirrors kind of our own civil war, brother against brother, um, you know, power, the, the whole thing. So there's no way that you can't get sucked into it without 
learning about the rest. And then when you get to Elizabeth II, you know, the monarchy has changed and transformed, and it's literally had to roll with the times. I mean, the reason they're not like kings and queens, like tyrants, is because, you know, at some point in time, as human nature was evolving and as people were becoming a little bit more educated, those kind of kings and queens just weren't what a country needed. So they created the constitutional monarchy. They basically like took away all the powers where you could like kill your wives, <laughs> create your own church. <laughs> like it took away all of that stuff, but the creators of this constitutional monarchies that you started seeing in most of Europe really they wanted to preserve the majesty and they wanted to preserve the aristocracy. And so this is, this is what brings you to today. And man, Elizabeth II, she's a boss. I've done more prints and paintings on Elizabeth II than any of my other pieces. People love her. Like I cannot hang on to them. And I always use the word legend over her eyes because to be honest, you know, if you are a young girl growing up, who doesn't want to be a boss like that? She is just, she holds the institution so dear to her heart. And not only that, but she's like a super cute grandma. I mean, <laughs> dude, I like totally wish that she was my grandma. I mean, can you imagine? And she has all those like cute little corgis around her. I mean, come on. So if you think about it, she has had to be a mom, a grandma, a queen, head of the Commonwealth, all of it. And one of the things that I mentioned before that is not lost on this generation of royals is plots, plots, plots. I mean, there is always plots. And to be honest, the current queen she, one of the things that I love so much about her is her love of her family. And her father meant so much to her that a large part of the way that she rules is, is to honor the memory of her father. You know, if anybody out there knows anything about her dad, like he wasn't even supposed to be king. His older brother was supposed to be king. And then he totally hooked up with a divorced American. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> Ringing any bells. But he totally did. He hooked up with like this divorced American. And back then in the 1930s, I mean, they were part, they were just not vibing with that. Parliament was not vibing with the fact that their future king is going to marry this divorced American. And I think she was divorced twice. <laughs> she had two husbands and they were not down with it. The country wasn't down with it. It was still those times where you know, a little bit of dysfunction wasn't socially acceptable amongst like all the classes. The queen's dad had to like, at, like become king because his older brother wanted this bitch so bad that he abdicated the throne. And the abdication crisis totally like threw the queen's family into utter turmoil. And the reason that I paint her so much is because if you know the story about the abdication, that was like the turning point in the lives of like everybody in her family. And her dad had to step up to be king. Like if you ever saw that movie, The King's Speech, he like has a stutter 
and he has to like learn how to speak in public with this like horrible stutter but the man did it because the monarchy was so important this present queen literally is like a descendant from a monarchy that goes back like a thousand years she is part of an I think an unbroken line of kings and queens for like a thousand years and that institution was super super important to them and especially they went through world war ii and service to the country and duty to their people were so important to them and I think a lot of those values like duty and honor and service I really don't think that there's enough of that flying around I mean all of the stuff that I usually put in the paintings of the queen like she's an OG <laughs> She is, you know, still grinding. She has been on the throne like longer than any other British king or queen. Like for sure, she is the longest sitting one. And, you know, some people think that I'm a little hard on Meghan Markle in my paintings, but I'm not really like being hard on her. Uh, like, most artists out there understand what I'm saying, that a lot of the times when you're creating a painting or a piece, you are working through feelings that you have. And when I'm doing my pieces on Harry and Meghan Markle, I'm working out my disappointment in them because, dude, I got, like, disappointed in them. And I know a lot of Amer Americans love her, and I'm not trying to really dish your girl, but when you look at my paintings, this is why I wanted to do this video. Like, you have to see them from my perspective. 